So back in Expert Agent, on to the applicant record. We're now going to start working with the tenancy. So clicking into the Tenancies tab of the applicant record and clicking into the Pending Tenancy. The first thing we need to do on this Pending Tenancy is right click, change status and reserve the tenancy. Now we've reserved the tenancy because we are waiting for the tenant application to come back to us and we're going to just let everybody else in the company know that this tenancy is potentially going through the tenancy process. So we're going to mark the properties under negotiation but not stop marketing and not mark the applicant as inactive. The anticipated move-in date is a week after you press the reserve button. Pressing save will mark the tenancy status as reserved and in the training accounts will ask if you want to change the property board. You can just close that down if you don't want to change the board at this point. So we can now see on the tooltip of the tenancy that the tenancy status is now reserved. If you have sent the tenant portal on the applicant record on the events tab you will receive the tenant portal application once you get that back. You will also receive an email as well um, letting you know that they have done that. But on the tenant portal application we'll have all of their reference details which you can then input onto the applicant record in the references tab. Clicking back into the tenancy, what we can do now is tell the system that we've created that. So we can go to Manage References. Clicking on Manage References will open up two date fields, one for references created and one for references received. So we're going to add in the references created date field here. So we created the references today. We use an outsource reference company, so we don't need to save and create letters. If we do, that would take us through to the template grid where we can create letters to our referencing company if necessary or if we create our own references. Pressing the save button however will move the references created date field and add it into onto the tenancy record and we can now add a references received target date as well. If we do not tell the system that we've received the references back by the 12th of September this tenancy will move into the possible problem tenancies quick link. Otherwise when we have received the references back we can right click, manage references again and input the references received date and again save or save and create letters if need be. That's now inputted the date into the references received date, which supersedes the references received target. So this tenancy is not going to flag up as a possible problem on the 12th of September. What we can do now is right click and save the record, or you can use the save button on the side here. You can just see just above here a save and flag option, which will flag up this tenancy in the navigation history with the tab text of red. Especially useful if you are popping out and you hadn't quite finished all of the information that you needed to add in at this point. Otherwise, you can just press the save button on the right hand side here and that saved the tenancy. What we can do at this point on the action menu is manage our tenancy agreement. Now, even if you create your tenancy agreements outside of Expert Agent, you still need to do this step. All right, this is still a very important step to do. Manage tenancy agreement. It's pulled through the landlord details here. Now, if we'd added Ben in as the main landlord on the property record and we hadn't manipulated that landlord name field at the bottom of the landlord's tab, it would still be reading Leslie and Ben despite the fact that Ben was the lead landlord. All right, so that's why it's really important to get that landlord name field on the property record set correctly. The agreement type is a six month AST, which means it is pulled through the initial term of six months for us. The start date on the tenancy, You've also got the agreement signed date, which you can obviously only sign if you are doing this process because your tenant is standing in front of you. If you were sending the tenancy off for them to sign, you wouldn't be able to add in the date that it was actually signed until they received until you'd received it back from them. The rent amount, the rent frequency, the rent day, 
the deposit amount, the deposit scheme, and then we've got the option here to create the tenancy agreement. Now, this is where if you created the agreement outside of Expert Agent, you would be unticking this and pressing the Save button. You'd filled in all of these important fields, but you're not going through to the template grid because you don't need to. However, we do create the tenancy agreement inside Expert Agent, so I'm going to keep that tick box ticked and press the Save button. And that takes me through to the template grid. On the template grid at the top here, because we've got multiple landlords, we've got the option to send it to the lead landlord or a selected landlord. Now, if these two landlords lived at separate addresses, if we selected the lead landlord, it would send it to Leslie and Ben at Leslie's address. If we selected landlord and selected Ben, it would send it to Leslie and Ben, but at Ben's address. If you've got multiple tenants, you'd have the same option on the right hand side. Now you may have your tenancy agreements on the R letters tab, which is most mostly where all of your templates will be. We do not have any default tenancy agreements because we are not a letting agents. We don't like to get things wrong for you. So that's why we can give you access to the compliant letters and agreements tab at a cost of 15 pounds per month per branch. They're supplied by the Letting Centre, by Letlink. They're 100% insured and compliant documents available for you to use if need be. So clicking into there, you can see there we've got an assured shorthold tenancy agreement for the TDS, which is the tenancy deposit scheme that we use. So I'm going to click into that. And that will create the tenancy agreement for me. As always, leave this screen open and click onto the download at the bottom of the screen. Now there's a couple of things you may want to change in here or that you can change. A couple of things that are delete as applicable. For example, um, the deposit is paid by the tenant so we can actually remove this bit because there is no guarantor or the deposit wasn't paid by anyone else. There's also any interest earned will belong to. We can delete as appropriate so we can say that it belongs to the tenant or the landlord or whoever the interest will belong to. So we've deleted other th things as applicable and there are all sorts of other terms of the tenancy that you can change and add into at this point. We've made changes to this document so we need to file, save as and save onto our local hard drive. Save and then close down Word. Of course, we can go file, print if the applicant is standing in front of us waiting for us to print this out for them. On this screen here, we can upload our changes back into Expert Agent to let the system know that what changes we made, but also to be able to send as an email if wanted, if needed. So clicking send as email will automatically attach that document there, the Word document that we created, as a PDF. We can change the name of the document if necessary. We can also change the email subject and select the recipients as well. Send email down at the bottom and that will send the email out to our applicant. Notice how I'm doing all everything from the tenancy record. It's really important that you are using the tenancy record to progress this through and not doing things from the property. If you do anything from the property at this point, it will update all tenancies. Like if you took the meter readings on the property record, it will update all tenancies on that property, including existing and expired tenancies. What we next need to do on the tenancy record is right click and we can now record meter readings. So clicking on record meter readings will pull through the utilities that we added onto the property record. So clicking on the utility from the list that will be here, we can then add in our open meter readings and then the date. However, if you do need 
the low and the high meter readings, you can add those in. You've also got economy seven there. And we can then do the closing meter readings once this applicant moves out. We can create a letter to Mr. Gasman from British Gas, or we can just press the save button and that saves that on the tenancy all the current tenancy that we're working on and also on the property, but does not save it on any of the other tenancies that may have been linked to that property. The last thing we'll need to do at this point is right click, change status, and we've got the option here to cancel a tenancy reservation if need be, which will put the property back on the market, or we can mark as let. Now we're going to mark this tenancy as let and we're going to change the property status to let, mark the applicant as inactive, update the applicant address with the property address and update the property occupier details with the lead tenant. We've got our start date and our first rent due and the agreement signed. The term expiry is six months less a day. The references checked were today and the initial funds received today. The review or renewal date is four months less a day and the inspection date is in a month's time. Now we're going to change the inspection date because I want to show you where this flags up in the system when it is ready for an inspection. If you've got Lettings Financials turned on, you will have the next button down at the bottom where you can charge the rent, the deposit, or the initial fees. If you do not have the finance turned on, you will just have the save button down at the bottom. That will then mark the tenancy as let and you can change the property board now if needed. Our tenancy is now marked as let, as is our property. If we open up the property record, we can see that on the access tab of the property record, our tenant has been added in as the occupier. If we click into the tenant record from the tenancy, the new address has been added into the details tab. The first previous addresses was their old address and they were there for four years, so we can add that in now. And on the tooltip, they have now been marked as inactive. If you are using the tenant portal, what you may want to do at this point is resend the tenant portal from the tenancy record. So on the tenancy record, right click, manage tenancy application, and resend. That will resend the tenant portal email. It will give them access to all sorts of things, the ability to um, add in any maintenance jobs, look at any of the statements if you're using Lettings Finance and all sorts.